Welcome to my lecture online. Now we're going to look at an infinite line of charge. And there we have to work things a little bit differently. What we do know for an infinite line of charge is that the electric field is equal to 1 over 2 pi epsilon sub naught times the linear charge density divided by the distance away from the line. And so we can use that equation to find the voltage difference between the volt at some point, like A, 2 meters away, and some other point, B, 3 meters away. Of course, we can assume that the farther away you go, the lower the voltage, and the closer you get, the higher the voltage. That seems to make sense. But how do we find the difference? Well, we're going to use this principle right here, that the voltage of A minus the voltage of B is equal to the integral from A to B of E dot dl. All right, so let's take a look here. Notice that when we're integrating from A to B, dl will be in the direction from A to B. That means our dl will be in this direction. And of course, so will be the electric field. And notice that in this case, since we're integrated from A to B, that the direction of dl and the direction of E is in the same direction. So since this is a dot product, this essentially becomes equal to the integral from A to B time of E times dl times the cosine of the, angle of the angle between them, but that is going to be equal to 1 since the angle between them is 0. So now we can rewrite this as Va minus Vb is equal to E, now E is equal to that, so we write this as 1 over 2 pi epsilon sub naught times lambda, so instead of 1 we can just make that lambda because these are all constants, and then we can integrate that What's remaining is 1 over r, and of course dl then becomes dr. And that's easier to integrate, that's simply the natural log of r, so this becomes equal to lambda divided by 2 pi epsilon sub naught, oops, epsilon sub naught, times the natural log of r evaluated from a to b. And of course that becomes equal to charge density divided by 2 pi epsilon sub naught times, when we plug in the upper limit, we get uh, the natural log of B minus the natural log of A. And then we can write it as follows. We can then say that VA minus VB, which essentially is the voltage found when we move from B to A. It's a little bit confusing, but keep that in mind. And that's going to be equal to lambda divided by 2 pi epsilon sub naught times the natural log of B minus the natural log of A can be written as the natural log of B over A. Like this. All right. Now, don't have to worry about absolute value signs because these are all um, positive values. B will always be bigger than A. So then we can say that VA minus VB is equal to the linear charge density is 20 nano, nano coulombs, which is 20 times 10 to the minus 9 coulombs per meter divided by 2 pi times epsilon sub naught, which is 8.85 times 10 to the minus 12. Uh, that doesn't look like a 12. Let me rewrite it. There we go. And the units then are going to be coulomb squared divided by newton meter squared. Like so. And then we multiply the times the natural log of B over A. And so we have 3 over 2 and the meters cancel out. That's just a number. And now we need a calculator. There it is. All right. So we end up with 20 e to the 9 minus times 1.5, take the natural log, divided by 2, divided by pi, and divided by 8.85 e to the 12 minus, and we get 145.8 volts. So we see that VA minus VB is equal to 145.8 volts as our answer. Now, does that make sense? Well, we know that VB must be higher than VA, and the difference between them, moving from 3 meters to 2 meters, that will cause a voltage change to occur of 145.8 volts positive, because we're moving closer to the positive charge. Now, the interesting thing about an infinite line charge is, let's say we define B to be at an infinite distance away, and we call that zero volts. What would be the voltage at a location like A, 2 meters away. And if we do that, let's see what would happen. So let VB equal 0 at 
infinity. Well, if we then look at that equation, we then say that VA minus VB, that's moving from B to A, from zero volts to whatever voltage A would be, that's going to be equal to lambda divided by two pi epsilon sub naught times the natural log of B now becomes infinite and we divide it by A, which is two. Now notice what happens here. The natural log of an infinite number because infin infinity divided by 2 is infinity, is infinity, and so therefore the voltage at A relative to the voltage at B, which is 0 volts, would be infinity volts, and so therefore that would be undefined. So that's the strange thing about an infinite line charge, is that the voltage difference between being infinitely far away and getting close to it would be infinite in size. So the only thing that makes sense for us when we have an infinite uh, infinite line charge, and of course in the reality, in the real world, we don't have an infinite line charge, but a very long line charge, is that the voltage should simply be different between some point here and some point closer by, and we simply calculate the voltage difference between them, and that is how it's done. Well, why don't you show how you get from the UAL very well? Oh, okay, I'm sorry, yeah. So, the suggestion was, somehow magically I took this and turned into volts. And my wife says, well, not so fast. How do you go from these units to voltage? And so that's what I was trying to show them. So in the numerator, we have coulombs per meter. In the denominator, we have coulombs squared divided by newtons times meter squared. And so when we divide by fraction, that's the same as multiplying by its inverse. So we can get rid of this and reverse that. So this becomes newton meter squared per coulomb squared. And then we can see that this meter cancels out this meter and this coulomb cancels out this coulomb. And then that means that we end up with units of Newton meters per coulomb. Now, Newton per coulombs is the units of the electric field and meters is distance. And we know that by definition that the voltage is equal to, or delta V, the delta V across an electric field is equal to the strength of the electric field times the distance. And so we know that the units for the electric field is newtons per coulomb. And we know that the units for distance is meters, and so therefore these two must equate to the units of voltage. And that is where it came from.